by re-examining some statements. Five statements. Number one, can we call the Ashkenazi Jews our brothers? And should we be following in their footsteps? Number two, as believers, should we look to the leadership of Theodore Herzl and David Ben-Gurion? Number three, how does the Zionism of the 19th century compare with the Zionism in the scripture? And number four, are we supposed to complete the work of secular Bolshevik Jews? And finally, number five, what does a careful examination of the history of Zionism reveal? So we're taking their visions, we're taking their writings, and we're taking their statements, and we're turning them around and using them as questions, and we will delve into history and scripture and see if these things measure up. Honesty and integrity, exposing the darkness by shining the light. Number one. Can we call the Ashkenazi Jews our brothers and should we be following in their footsteps? Ashkenazi Jews who believe the Babylonian Talmud supersedes the scripture in authority. That Babylonian Talmud that blasphemes such things. And I'm deliberately right now not going to use Yahusha's true name here and quote directly from the Talmud. This is what it says in the Talmud. Jesus is in hell being boiled in hot excrement. Gittin 57a. Does that sound like your brothers? Jesus' mother was a whore who played the harlot with carpenters. Saboth. 104b. Christians are allied in hell and Christianity is worse than incest. Aboda Zarah 17a. Just the Jews are humans and non-Jews are no humans but cattle. Keteruth 6b. Does that sound like your brother's? Are we really to call them our brothers for unity's sake? I mean, am I cray-cray for believing that we shouldn't? For upsetting the apple cart? Well, in light of our master's words, who is my mother? Who is my brothers? Whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister. And mother. And who are the Ashkenazi anyway? DNA studies confirm that 97% of the people who call themselves Jews are not descendants of Abraham. In 2001, Dr. Ariella Oppenheim, and by the way, she's a Jew, a biologist at the Hebrew University, published the first extensive study of DNA and the origin of the Jews. Her research found that virtually all the Jews came from Khazarian blood, the Khazars. The newest DNA research, science, from Dr. Iran Elehak, also a Jew, and his associates at McCusick Nathan's Institute of Genetic Medicine, Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine has confirmed that the various groups of Jews in the world today do not share a common genetic origin and their genome is largely Khazar. That's Johns Hopkins University. This is research by Jews into the ancestry and the supposing DNA that so many people like to go hunting for online. In the 1973 Jewish Encyclopedia, documents that approximately 90% of the world's so-called Jews are, in fact, Khazars. That's from the Jewish Encyclopedia. 
N. Pollock, professor of medieval Jewish history at Tel Aviv University, says that the majority of Eastern European Jews are Khazar and Japhetic in origin. They're not Semitic. They trace their line back to Japheth, not Shem. Immigration statistics indicate approximately 90% of the world's so-called or self-styled Jews living in 42 countries of the world are emigrants of Eastern European Khazaria. Yahushua's words that Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles has truly come to pass, has it not? As confirmed by 97% of the so-called Jews in Israel are Gentiles because Ashkenaz was a son of Goma. He wasn't a son of Shem. Can we wake up and turn to Genesis chapter 10 and read our scriptures? But the charge is that you're being anti-Semitic. But that would mean that we're talking derogatorily about the sons of Shem, right? But I'm talking about the imposters that are in fact sons of Japheth. Anti-Japhethetic. Do you see? Do you see the deception, brethren? Genesis chapter 10. Find out for yourself where Ashkenaz came from and the Ashkenazi. So we can see right here, so the answer to question one is quite simply and resounding, no. No. According to Jewish researchers, looking into the DNA genome and the history of the world, no. The second question I had, as believers, should we look to the leadership of Theodore Herzl And David Ben-Gurion. Well, Theodore Herzl, the modern founder of Zionism, Theodore Herzl once said this, quote, It is essential that the sufferings of the Jews become worse. This will assist in the realization of our plans. I have an excellent idea. I shall induce anti-Semites to liquidate Jewish wealth. The anti-Semites will assist us thereby in that they will strengthen the persecution and oppression of the Jews. The anti-Semites shall be our best friends. Why? Because they didn't care about religious, genuine Yehuda. They were interested in political Zionism and were willing to sacrifice and slaughter the true Yahudim on the altar of Zionism. Herzl sacrificed religious Jews on the altar of Zionism and aided in the increase of suffering of religious Jews and assisted the secular nations in their persecution of Jews. He fanned the flames of anti-Semitism to bring about his hellish goal of Zionism. The Herzl, the Israeli historian Benny Morris described how Herzl foresaw anti-Semitism and how it could be harnessed for the realization of his Zionism. He stated, Herzl regarded Zionism's triumph as inevitable. Not only because in Europe was there ever more unstable and untenable for Jews, but also because it was in Europe's interests to rid the Jews and be relieved of anti-Semitism. The European political establishment would eventually be persuaded to promote Zionism. Herzl recognized that anti-Semitism would be harnessed to his own Zionist purposes. Herzl said this, quote, The wealthy Jews rule the world. The fate of the governments lies in their hands. They start wars between countries. And when they wish, the governments make peace. When the wealthy Jews sing, 
The nations and their leaders dance along. And meanwhile, the Jews get richer. This was published by Herzl in a German newspaper. It was Herzl's Zionists, Bolsheviks, supporters who actually declared...